you can do it. We still have a lot of training to do with this owl. This is not exactly how we're supposed to how it's supposed to go down. Oh guys, this is so random, but the monocled cobra right here has a bit of bark hanging out of his mouth while he's trying to eat. It's covered in poop, so we need to get it out. We don't want him to eat it. There we go. Oh, look at him. He's like, thank you. oh, we said thank you. You want it? Come on. Yes! Yes! That is awesome. I've had these green anacondas for like over a year and they're just eating chicks. Oh, oh. Yes! Yes! Good boy! Good boy! Yes! Take your treat! That was the first time McCoy has ever flown to the glove. Uh, chicken nuggies. Uh, chicken nuggies. Uh, perfect. Uh, I thought I was going to drop those. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm just hanging out. Uh, I was getting Ruth and I lunch out our chicken McNuggies, but that's fine. We can eat lunch after the video. This episode is going to be about feeding the animals. So let's go feed Bagoy, and we're going to go feed the mambas, the black mambas and the green mambas. Ooh, what about the purple mambas? There's no such thing as a purple mamba. Good boy. Good boy. He's very excited right now. He wants some food. This is Bagoy, the Eurasian eagle owl, the second largest owl on the planet. Let me actually get him loose. Make sure he doesn't jump at me real quick because he gets a little too gun ho for the food. Let's let him not let him see it, but we got a lean rat right here, or a small rat. We're gonna see if we can get him to fly to the glove. Up up! Bagoy! Up up! Bagoy! Bagoy! Up up! Bagoy! Up up! You can do it, come on! Can you see, see how he's looking? Oh, come on. Oh, boy, up, up. Come on, you can do it. Yuck. Ah. Not what I planned. Not what I planned. All right, beautiful people. We still have a lot of training to do with this owl. This is not exactly how we're supposed to, how it's supposed to go down. But don't worry. Because he's still young and learning. And, you know, his, his talons only have almost a thousand pounds per square inch pressure. So, Really nothing to worry about, only two times greater force than a bald eagle's uh, talent pressure. I don't have to worry about, you know, my carotid artery getting punctured or anything, right? <laughs> fun, really fun. All right, let's get him back on his perch real quick. We're going up, up, come on. All right, let's see if we can do this the right way. That was not the right way. That's the dangerous way with a big bird of like this. This is the second largest owl on the planet. One of the largest raptors on the planet. Come on. Come on. Tasty. Come on, McGoy. Up up. Good boy. Up up. Come on, McGoy. Let's do this one more time. But you have to land on the glove, all right? You're going to be a problem now, huh? Up up. Okay, okay. Up up. Come on. Jump. Jump, jump. No, you can't just walk over and eat it. He needs to learn that if he's going to eat, he has to eat from the glove on my glove. We want to train like this so it's easier to start flight training with him. As he gets bigger and he's not going through this baby stage where he's growing out his feathers, which he's basically almost done, he's going to be able to fast for most of the day, which is going to motivate him for the evening when we feed him, getting him to fly to the glove and land, which will then lead to the flight training shows for outreach programs educating the public. Come on, McCoy. Let's go here first. Up, up. Up up! Up up! Up up! Up up! Come on, McGoy, up up! One more hop! One more hop to this glove, not my back! Come on, buddy, you can do it! I see you fly all the time! Up up! Get a little taste. There you go. Come on, up up! You know, the thing about wildlife is patience. When you're working with animals, trying to train them, you can't get frustrated. Even if they try to come at you with their talons or on your carotid artery, you gotta be patient. Because animals don't respond to negative reinforcement. You gotta be positive. Always end every interaction on a positive note. Up up. Up up. Yes! Yes! Good boy! Good boy! Yes! Take your treat! That 
that was the first time Bagoy has ever flown to the glove to get food. Even though it was really not much, just a foot or two, for him, that's a big deal. That's his first time ever launching to the glove. Good job. Good job. Happy noises. Happy noises. Oh, eat that rat. I'm gonna rip it apart. He's getting so big he can use his feet to hold the rat while he rips it to pieces, making it easier to digest the nutrition in those bones and that, those guts. All of that good stuff. Guys, I'm so happy. That's the first time he's ever flown to the club. This is the beginning of real flight training. Eventually, that little, yes, yes, that little mile marker right there of him just going a foot, one day it's gonna be a football field. Isn't that amazing? I love this owl so much. Bogoy, the Eurasian eagle owl. Bogoy meaning owl in Hungarian. And their scientific name, Bogoy Bogoy, is the Eurasian eagle owl. So it's just an all around good birdie from a, from, a, from a land of my family, the Hungarians. Yes. I love you. Oh, you're so tough. Eat up all that guts and all that yummy stuff. Yes. You know, Bogoy is definitely an educational ambassador because all I do is educate and teach people about wildlife for a living. I love it, that's all I like to do. But also, he's a bit of a personal animal, kind of like Bera, my dog. I love him so much. I like hanging out with him, having a coffee in the morning with him, holding him on the glove. He's such a good boy. Want the rest of that? I'll let you have the rest. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. You can eat the whole thing? Can you eat that whole thing? Are you going to be able to eat that whole thing? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 very talented. Did you like that? Did you like that? Oh, 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 oh nearly got my lip. I love you so much. Oh, look at those horns. Look at those beautiful ear tufts that are coming out. They're almost just about an inch. They used to be little fluffs, and then one day they're gonna be like two inches tall. Beautiful. You gotta love birds of prey. Look how beautiful he is. Show us those wings. Ooh, look at those wings! All right, guys, we're gonna put him back on his perch because uh, the room was just getting cleaned. Actually, let me show you where he came him at night. This right now, where we're in, is actually a food prep room and baby room for baby animals. It's also a tornado room, solid concrete, so if there's ever a hurricane or a tornado or anything, I can box up and bag up all my snakes and put them in this tornado concrete solid room. So they're all nice and protected, bagged up, boxed up, labeled, ready for any hurricanes. So this is our solid baby room. And then right here, this is our other room. This is actually where Bogoy goes at night. And since we got him as a little baby, you know, we didn't have any perches that are tall or anything. But now what we're going to do is have big, tall perches. So when I walk in here, he's already perched up high. And you can fly to my glove and you can begin training right off the bat in the morning or in the evening. He's such a good boy. We have all this turf. It's really good for him to clean himself on and also prevents him from getting bumble foot, which is when they step on a surface and their claws stick into their own foot, causing infection. Right? You're such a good boy. I think what we're gonna do is take his little leash off. There we go. We're gonna, just gonna take the little leash off like right, this. Real easy. Any day now. All right, so we're gonna get his leash off. He still has his jesses on, that's fine. Usually, if you're gonna leave the bird for the rest of the day, you take those jesses off and just leave the anklets, but we're gonna let him fly. Fly! Woo, there you go, good boy. Hey, don't attack my feet. Don't attack my feet. He hate it. He's such a good boy. All right, I'm gonna get him some water for his little water dish over here. He's gonna play this possum. Go play with your toys. And he'll get those jesses off tonight when he's done being handled because I still have to do some training from later today. I'm so happy, guys. That was incredible. The first time Bagoy's ever flown to the club. Just a foot. But one day at football field. All that water for you, buddy. Here. Get it. Get it, Bagoy. Get it. Yes. <laughs> get it. Get it. Stop it to death. Stop it to death. Good boy. All right. Let's go feed some snakes. All right, so first off, we're gonna be feeding the green mambas. These are my eastern green mambas. You can see them right there, sent to me from Dingo Dinkleman over in South Africa. Thank you again, Dingo Dinkleman. I love these snakes so much. They're probably the prettiest venomous snakes in the world. One of the prettiest venomous snakes in the world because they're just so emerald green. And this locality actually gets a bit of a blue on it too, which Dingo is showing me. So definitely check out Dingo's channel and see some crazy mambas as well. Let's see, we're gonna unlock the enclosure and what we have to do is separate these guys. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is putting one of these green mambas in this enclosure temporarily so it can separate them completely and it makes feeding a lot easier. 
Dingo warned me these guys would be pigs when it comes to food, and they really are not just pigs, but ruthless. They try to steal from each other, and honestly, it just makes it a little more difficult for feeding time. All right, we got both mambas right there. We're good to go. We're taking the glass off like this because I have special insulation in between the glass's gap just to make sure there's no way of these snakes getting out. Would they escape without the gap? Probably not, but just to make sure they don't get out because they are such a dangerous species. And now what I'm gonna do is get one of them out, put them in this box right here, put a little rat pup in there, some nice protein, let them eat in privacy. Oh, you gotta watch out, see how fast the head came towards the front of the glass. These guys are so fast, you cannot make a mistake with a green mamba. And they're hissing right now. They, they sound like little baby king cobras almost, the way they hiss. Come here. All right, we got one green mamba right here. Ooh, there we go, super fast snakes. I mean, like, wow, very fast. Look at this snake, beautiful eastern green mamba found in southern east coast of Africa, literally on the coastlines. And they'll find these guys actually on the beaches too, sometimes getting lost in the waves. Let's make sure we don't take a bite off the snake. It's one of the most powerful neurotoxins on the planet. Even though it's not drop for drop deadlier than a black mamba, it still possesses the power to put you in a coffin. So you do not want to make a mistake with that snake. Let's secure this real quick to make sure the other mama doesn't come out. And we're gonna see what we've got. I got some little little rat pups. Ooh, this is a little bit better. This is this is a little wean rat with the fur, so that's good protein, good meal. Dingo said they'd be grown like weeds if they eat like this. Let's see if I'll actually go after it right now. Want that? You want that? Huh? You want that? Interested? Ooh, look. Look at that. Yeah, huh? Interested? A little spooked. Hello, my name is Joe. Oh! oh! That was a nice little kiss, but I'd like to tell you how much I love you. Your eyes look like the most beautiful eyes of any any woman I've ever seen. Can I have a kiss, please? Oh, oh, oh nice back massage. Thank you. Oh, I was feeling tense. Thank you. Oh, can we have some privacy? Thank you. All right, I'll give them some privacy so they can eat. There we go. Nice and secure with this little carabine. Perfect. All right, now we can feed this little lady up here. All right, we're gonna move the glass to the side. Watch out for this little lady, cause she's fast as hell. Oh yeah, that's a good meal. Ooh, that's gonna make these snakes grow like crazy. Let's see how hungry she is. You in there, you hungry? A little poke? A little poke to wake you up? Hello? Come on. Yo, did you see that strike? They are just so fast when it comes to their strike. I'll leave this rat, this little wean rat right there at the edge. So we can watch her eat safely, but we're going to close that glass up because we want no risk of her just shooting out. They're just way too quick. We'll put the lock on temporarily while we wait for them to eat. Oh, look, 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 look. There she is. She's starting to come out. The green mamba. One of the most notorious snakes on the planet. Mambas, they put fear in people's hearts. Green mambas, black mambas, uh, any type of mamba. It scares people, but in reality, these snakes want nothing to do with us. They're just another part of the food chain, just like us. We just need to learn to live and cohabitate with them. And that's why we have these snakes, to share them with you guys and show you guys they're not bad at all. They're to be respected and admired. Guys, this is so random, but the monocled cobra right here has a bit of bark hanging out of his mouth while he's trying to eat. It's covered in poop, so we need to get it out. We don't want him to eat it. There we go. Oh, look at him. He's like, thank you. Oh, he said thank you. I'm gonna put that down and try not to get bit by this lovely little dandelion. All right guys, we're gonna be feeding the green anacondas. This is really cool because they don't just eat chicks now. We actually got them to eat wean rats about a week ago. So let me actually get all the glass out because we're gonna clean that water while they chomp down on rats because the water is all nasty and needs to get cleaned. Look how beautiful these snakes are. Green anacondas, female green anacondas, which get bigger than the males. They'll actually get like closer to 16, 18 foot. And males usually get around like 13 foot. So these girls will be huge one day. This is a nice weaned rat or small rat. Hopefully, actually let's start over here because 
she'll end up wrapping around the sister and we don't want that. Let's see. You want it? You want it? Come on. Yes! Yes! That is awesome. I've had these green anacondas for like over a year and they're just eating chicks. So now that they're eating rats, that's more protein and they're gonna do much, much better on that diet instead. Let's put this one right in the back so we can still get out that water dish with no problem. You want? Go on. Yeah? 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 Yes! Yes! Oh, this makes me so happy. These guys are gonna get huge. These ladies, look at them, they're so pretty. Look at that pattern. The green anacondas might not be as vibrant as the yellow anacondas, but they are unique in their own ways. And <laughs> black mambas too. What are you doing, Kobe? Kobe Dinkleman, my black mamba's trying to check out this rat. He's pretty hungry. He's looking, oh, you see that? He's looking for something to eat too. Good thing I got that glass protecting me. We have a nice little wean rat for you to eat, buddy. Kobe Dinkleman is a black mamba that Dingo Dinkleman also sent to me from Africa. Thank you again, Dingle Dinkleman. You're so nice. I I can't wait to one day grab you by your shoulders and pull you in tight for a kiss and hug you tight. Sleep tight, Dingo, because over there it's nighttime right now. Anyways, so green anaconda's doing well. Let's get them back inside the enclosure. There we go. I'm going to clean their water dish real quick, and I'll be right back, guys. And then we're going to feed Allison the black mamba. She, look at her. She's ready to go. She's looking everywhere. She smells the rats. Huge 10-foot-long black mamba. And then we're going to feed Kobe Dinkleman, the little male right here. You happy? You want some food? You want some food? Huh? Look at him. He's like, he's shaking. He wants food so bad. All right, let's get this water cleaned up. I'll be right back. people we've got our fresh h2o for our green anacondas once these little ladies finish eating they're gonna go in there and soak and enjoy themselves let's just get that right in the right position get the glass back on and now we're gonna feed the black mambas this is gonna be good these guys are super ready to eat i mean it is summertime it's hot their metabolism is fast because they're lapidate family members meaning they have a fast metabolism they're front fixed fang snakes very potent neurotoxic venom now we're gonna be feeding kobe dinkleman the black mamba Oh, look at him. He's so cute. He's so cute for a black mama. Come on, look at that face. He's like, oh, you didn't feed me. Please, don't feed me. All right, we're going to unlock this enclosure. He already knows what's going on. I think what we'll do is just crack this just a little bit like that so we can slide the rat in without actually opening up that enclosure too much. We're going to actually feed this guy. Introduce him. Hi, Kobe. I'm a big fan of the channel. I love African animals, and I just want to say I came all the way from Connecticut to say hello and take a photo. So if you could just prop for the photo, I'd love to give you a big kiss. Oh! Wow. I didn't know we would get this intimate so quick. Holy oh, ow! Ow! That was a really rough kiss, Kobe. Kobe, I don't feel so good. Go, go. Oh, Kobe. I feel a little sleepy. feeding all the snakes, taking care of everyone. She's been tasting the air, using that forked tongue, picking up the scent particles of the rats. She knows it's feeding day. She's going all over the place, waiting for food. So let's not make her wait anymore. Let's get a nice, good medium rat. We actually have three of these medium rats ready to go. We're gonna open up this glass like this. A little bit safer. And we're gonna see how much she'll spring out. Her strike is incredibly fast, like, Super fast. Let's see what she does. If she's calm or, or very speedy with her strike. Huh? You hungry? Come on. Come on. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come on. That's for you. That's for you. Go ahead. Don't be scared. Allison is a 10 foot long black mamba. But as you can see, she's wary. She comes slowly. And once she realizes there's actual food in front of her, chomps down with ease. This snake wants nothing to do with me. She's actually like a shy 
old lady, if anything. You know, she's like around 12 years old or so. She's been around for a bit. She's big, she's beautiful, she's highly venomous. But she just wants to use that venom on myself. She just wants to keep to herself, do her own thing. You get a little smooch, are you okay? She seems to be a little bit shy today. She's not even striking out like crazy. Let's see if we can just prop that rat right there. I'm gonna put the rest of the rats in there. So she starts to feed, they're already all over the place for her to grab at. And since she's so twitchy right now, you see how she's all twitchy all over the place? Close it and make sure it's nice and locked and secure. And let's watch Alice and the Black Mama chomp down on all these rats. She is such a beast. Look at her just slurping down those rats like it's nothing. Some people would look at these snakes and think that they're not venomous, they don't have fangs because they don't actually see the fangs. But when you look closely at a venomous snake eating, you can actually see the sheets covering the fangs. They're always hidden underneath the sheets and so they're poised ready to go into the animal, the prey item. So most of the time you're just gonna see gummy flesh around the front of the snake's mouth. This being an Elapidae species, it has front fixed fangs. Usually they're pretty short front fixed fangs, but King Cobras and Black Mambas have some of the longest front fixed fangs of any Elapidae family member. So these guys might not appear to have big nasty looking fangs, but underneath those gummy sheaths, there's good sized fangs that will pump you with some of the most powerful neurotoxic venom on the planet. So powerful, it will shut down your diaphragm to the point where you can't breathe on your own. Think about your ability to move your fingers. Think about how you can wiggle your toes. What if you couldn't do anything? What if your whole entire body was obsolete? You, like, you couldn't do anything and all you could do is think. You can feel, kind of, you can think, but you cannot move any of your body. Literally, that's what it feels like to get envenomated by a neurotoxic snake this powerful. Let alone the fact that if you don't get intubated, have a have a trach go down into your into your trachea to help you breathe. If you don't have that, then you cease to breathe and your body functions fail, you die. So neurotoxic snakes are the most powerful venom snakes on the planet. I mean, out of all different venoms, even though we have our venoms that eat away at flesh, uh, that will eat away at a localized area and rot you, the most dangerous, powerful venom on the planet is neurotoxic venom because it will shut you down and send you to the next life. All right, beautiful people, we're gonna let Allison finish the rest of her rats, leave her to be. Thank you so much for joining me on my wild life. I just wanted to say I love you guys so much. And thank you again to everyone who came out and supported CrocFest this last Saturday. We raised over $107,000 for the critically endangered gharial. That will make a huge difference for the conservation of that species. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for all getting together to help push conservation efforts. That's what this channel is all about. Everyone coming together and helping push conservation groups, organizations, helping with breeding species in captivity. Everyone working together to make this planet better and better. I love you guys. Looks like Allison's gonna start munching out on that other rat. We're gonna let her be. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. Most of all, don't forget to check us out on Chandlerswildlife.com because you can get yourself your own sexy merchandise. I mean, look at this. That's a that's a man with a mullet and a pack of Cuban crocodiles. Chandler's Wild World, what can I say? Expect to see this in the future because it's real, it's gonna happen, baby. Also, don't forget to check us out on Patreon, where you can find exclusive content and updates on what we're doing, and find out about some of the secretive things we're up to that we don't post on the main channel. If you guys support us on Patreon, if you guys support us on ChandlersWildlife.com with the merchandise, you guys are helping support our big goal of building out this facility. Guys, it's gonna cost a lot of money to get the framing, the drywall, drop the ceiling in here, get a big AC unit, do the floors, do the walk-in king cover enclosures, and then eight foot fencing around the whole 11 acres. Oh my goodness, not to mention, we you have to do the actual enclosures for the animals, for the crocs, so it's a lot to do. It's a lot of building. It's going to be a lot of money, but we're going to get it done. We're going to do it together, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to change this world day by day, make it better and better. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, most of all, follow your dreams, stay passionate, and do what you love. 